Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101. Today we're going to be making a rain effect using geometry nodes. Since some of you are in a rush to go somewhere, here is a quick overview before you leave. To start off, we're going to start with a plane and give it a material with a noise texture. We're going to make this noise really contrasted so that we only see just a few dots and stretch those dots in the Z axis and animate the Z position so that it looks like rain is falling. And now if we make the black areas transparent using a transparency shader, we get something that looks like rain. From there, we can have this on the side so that we can work on the geometry nodes. Add another plane, instance a bunch of particles on this and instance the rain plane we created onto these particles. You can rotate the instances to get the direction of the rain. For the splashes, you want to start with a plane, instance some points and use a raycast node to detect the ground and any other collider objects you want the rain droplets to collide with. Here I have a jeep and the ground detected. I can use the heat position of the raycast to move my points onto, onto the surfaces of these colliders. The distribution of these points can be changed by adjusting the seed of the points node to get a different look. If you do this on every frame, we get an effect that looks like raindrops. Now all we have to do is instance a splash instance onto these points and we will have rain. Okay, so now let's jump into a more detailed version. But if you want to get this generator, I'm going to be leaving links in the description. You can get it on my Patreon page, Gamrod and my YouTube membership page. This is a great way to support my channel and keep these videos free of charge. Add a plane, rotate it 90 degrees, apply rotation, I'm also going to move my pivot point to the top here, origin 3D cursor, just like that, so that it can rotate around there. And I'm going to go to my shader editor, create a new material. I'm going to go to the material tab and we're going to start with a noise texture. That's how it looks. I'm going to add texture coordinates and also add a ramp, get some contrast in there. We want to see just a few dots. So I'm going to scale this noise up, increase my contrast and straight this in the, in the Z axis. We can increase the roughness, play with the detail, just play around with the settings to see if you get the right settings you want. You can even straight this on the Y, apply scale just like that. And now it's time to animate this. We want this to be moving like rain. So I'm going to animate this using frame divide by a hundred. If I hit playback, that's good enough. Now, all I'm going to do is use an emitter and a transparency shader. Mix those, connect this, and use this as the factor. Now, if you're using EV, you have to make sure that the material has alpha blend option in the material settings. If I look at this, we have our rain. Now, create a plane, scale it up, set up a new geometry nodes, distribute some particles, instance on those points. Let's bring in our rain object, connect it as the instance, and Look at that. We have a lot of objects. You can even use poison disc, which will just give you a minimum distance. Now, if I scale this, I can make this as large as I want. So you can rotate this on the Y axis. Now, one thing you will notice is that it looks like our rain is looping. I can easily fix that with a simple trick. Let me go back to my shader editor. Because we are using the same object here, its animation is repeated here. Now, the advantage we have is that when we use geometry nodes to duplicate this over the points, we are creating instances or copies of this. Now, if I use the object info node, I can randomize the color of each instance just like that. The great thing about that is since we're using a 3D noise, let's just take a look at that noise, which is repeating. We can change this from 3D to 4D, and this will give us a W value that can add some randomization to the noise. Now, because this is the same value here for every instance, we're still getting a repeated pattern. Now, but if I use this random value for each instance connected to the W, you can see now every instance is getting, we are, we are basically randomized our rain. Now we can just preview our shader and we have rain. Now remember, you still have control over all of these parameters the noise size and everything like that. But that's not enough. We need to add splashes. Bring this back up just like this. Go to geometry nodes. 
and bring in my colliders bring that in now if you look at this ground here it is quite dense and you can keep it as dense as you want but for the case of this area i want the simulation to run fast so i'm going to first decimate it to remove some of that detail so i'll do a ratio of 0.1 apply that now it's going to reduce the the level of detail of our ground but i'm not too worried about that one other thing we could do before we add in more detail is go to your render settings and add an hdri image i'll go to the shader editor go to the world editor and just import in an environment texture environment texture now you can see in cycles we are running into a big issue because these are alpha planes, cycle limits the number of the number of transparency bounces to eight by default. So increase this to something like twenty-four, so that you can see through any transparent planes behind uh, this. I'm also going to go to the world settings and bring the light down a bit. I'm going to use Ctrl T to add coordinate mapping and just animate the Z rotation slightly. So I'm just going to use hash frame divide by one hundred to animate it. Now let's work on the splashes. We can go to the back to geometry nodes and look at our ground collection. Make sure you set it to relative, reset children, and realize instances. Now this is going to become a single object, just like this. We can go back to the original object, our emitter, distribute new points to that. Let's make this a little bit more, just like that. And now we want these particles to be placed on the ground of these collider objects. We can use a ray cast and use our ground colliders, which is the ground and the car as the target. And that will give us a heat position. So if I use a set position, I can transfer that heat position to become the new position of our splashes. If I hit play, nothing happens. But if I change the seed every frame, you see we get a nice animation. I can change this to use a time node and plug in the frame into the seed. And that gives us an effect like that. From there, we can join the two, our rain and our splashes, and uh, we have that. Now, let me just lock this for a bit. I'm going to create a splash. This is just going to be two planes that are rotated, just like this, with a texture, with a material. So let's create a new material and bring in an image texture. I'm going to use uh, this. So you can see it creates a really nice splash. Now all I have to do is use a transparency and animation. If you want this to be affected by light, you can use a translucency. So usually I just blend the emission and the translucency and then blend the mix with other transparency. Now this becomes our alpha. And again, let's go to the material settings here. Make sure that in EV we're using alpha blend and alpha clip for the shadows switch back to cycles i think i need to swap these so i want this to be affected by light so i'm just going to bring it towards the translucence quite a bit just like that we just have to select our original rain instancer go to geometry nodes just instance on points and bring in our splashes uh, that's quite too much so Let's scale this down to something like 0.1 and also make sure that the rotation is correct. So I'll just preview just these and rotate these on the X, 90 degrees. Scale this down quite significantly. You can also randomize the rotation just a bit. So random rotation. And we only want to randomize the Z rotation. So I'll use a combined X, make sure that the X is still 90 degrees and the Z is random. I think this is supposed to be 1.57, yes. So that's how you get the splashes. Another thing we could do is add extra detail to our ground and other surfaces. So this is our ground. If I bring in a new principal shader, look at that. I'm going to make this really reflective so that it looks like water, just like that. And I'm going to mix this with the original texture. Now I can have a rough looking texture or you can make it really reflective just like that you can look for a, a water drop texture so let me bring in an image texture yeah something that looks like this let me add coordinate mapping here just scale it down quite a bit we can use object mapping change this to box and I just rotate this let's say the scale 
set the scale to something like that. We're going to use this as a mixed texture. So uh, this really reflective area. I'm also going to animate it a bit on the x-axis, but I think I need to rotate this uh, this direction so that the water is running this direction just like that. Uh, it's just going to be a settle thing. So frame divided by a hundred. Yeah, so we have something like that. And I can use this as bump detail as well, as a height map. Now we can repeat this on the car body as well. Select the car body, bring in the image texture. Make sure I'm selecting the right material. Bring in the image texture. Take a look at this. Use Ctrl T to change to object mapping and make sure this is box. And uh, you can see that in some areas, the droplets are going the right direction and in others, uh, they are not. What you can do for areas that are not facing the right direction, you can create a selection. So I'm just going to create a new color attribute. Just call this one and change to vertex paint. And give this a white color. So I'll just use set vertex colors. Now I can come back to my material, jump out of edit mode. I can use a color attribute and select my color. And you can see I have this mask I've created. I can simply just duplicate uh, this setup, blend this with a mix node and just use this as my mask. So I just have to select the textures I want to rotate. So I think this should be 90 degrees so that those droplets are also following this direction. Now, all I have to do is animate this to go this way. I think this is supposed to be negative 90. Yeah, so that these follow that direction. So I'll use frame divide by a hundred. Uh, time was time was negative one to go the opposite direction, just like that. Do the same for this here, Z just like that. So frame divide by a hundred. Take a look at that. And we have raindrops. All you have to do is plug this into the roughness. Let's look at that. And we have that. You can also use this as bump detail. I think this has to be inverted. And you have rain, you have raindrops. If you want to add this on the tires, you can also do that. You just select the entire node group. And I think I'm just also going to select the bump, Ctrl G to group this. I'll call this rain. And uh, now I can copy this node, go to the tires material or wheels, paste that in. And I know that this went into uh, the roughness and this went to the normal. And now that works. Any changes I make to this node will be reflected into this as well. So that's, now you combine this, our rain generator and take a look at that. And if you look closely, you can see even water flowing on the ground here, which I think is a nice additional detail to have as well. So yeah, now just run this and you'll be good to go. Project files are going to be available on my Gamrod page, Patreon, and my YouTube membership page.